Alrighty, friends, you are approximately 55 minutes away from freedom Woo! and five days of vacation. So let's stand for a word of prayer. I'm a bad kiddo. All righty, guys, ready? Inhale. Breath hold. And birthday candle. Close your eyes. Deep breath, inhale. Hold. Exhale. Open your eyes. All together, let's pray. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Okay, folks. I'm not going to tell you how many years I'm taking you back, but let's just say it's several years ago. And um, there's two storylines here. Storyline number one is this is my freshman year in biology. I'm at Andrew Hill High School, which is that way. And I don't know if you've been by Andrew Hill. They've had a serious amount of upgrades um, in the past year. I went to Andrew Hill um, back in the day when it looked like a collection of army barracks. So not army barracks. Army barracks. If you've ever seen like these long road, like dormitory things, very plain, kind of ugly. Oh, yeah. Let's just say it wasn't Valley. Okay. Yeah. Here is Valley, as far as facilities are concerned, and Andrew Hill would have been at this. And I had a desk, and we had a room. Yay. And, and windows, kind of. Down the seat? Yes, I had a desk. <laughs> But I will tell you this, I have fabulous teachers, great classmates, so even though it wasn't the most posh of circumstances, a uh, relatively good learning experience. What I'm going to recite to you, let's put the phone away, is an experience in my freshman biology class, honors, and you've probably figured out that I love math. Generally, love, those who love math also love science, so that was too. I love math, love science, and I love God. So, and in those three things, loving God, loving math, loving science, in my mind, had no conflict whatsoever. The reason why, a few years earlier, um, when I was 12, uh, my parents divorced. And unfortunately, for those of you who've experienced that in this family, regardless of the age, um, that is a rock your world kind of experience. And so to get rid of me for the summer, quote unquote, or just kind of give me a distraction, mom sent me to a summer camp. I mean, to her, the summer camp was a Christian summer camp. She just signed me up. So I saw what I thought was a very odd sight. Up until this point, for lack of a better description, my family was Christmas Easter Christians. You understand what I'm saying by that? You kind of show up for Christmas. You kind of show up for Easter. But God wasn't really part of a significant part of my life. Until I'm here at this summer camp, and I'm 12, and I saw what I thought was the oddest sight in the world. The camp counselors, which then, they were like 19, 20, 21, they had Bibles with them at the beach. And I'm like, what's up with this? Now, they were having a good time, too, in the beach and playing games with us, you know, younger kids and stuff like that. And then they'd sit down and they'd have discussions about the Bible. And I thought that was just, you know, to me, a Bible was something that was at church on the podium that you read the Christmas story out of. And so I started asking questions and dialoguing with these folks, and I won't give you the whole story, but just let's just suffice to say, at some point, faith became real. I personally had to respond to the, to the person of Jesus Christ, who historically, I had to suffice my own, uh, own curiosity, he was a historical person, did claim to be God, and I had to respond to his message, uh, which I did. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. So this, at this point in my freshman biology class, love God, I had actually finished reading the entire Bible as a 13-year-old, which is a little odd for a 13-year-old. Yes, yes, a little odd. I was thinking, you know, if you're going to tell me it's God's word, then it's worth reading. Um, now, slogging my way through Second Chronicles and about 13 chapters of nothing but genealogy, I was like, okay, God, for some reason you thought this was important. It's here for a reason. I'm not quite sure why, but someone thought it was important. So here I am, love God, love science, love math. My biology teacher 
begins before a certain unit with this announcement. Now, another thing you need to know about me is that I have a very minor, but still exists, a minor auditory processing disability. Okay, that's a learning disability. That was not diagnosed to actually my first year of college, which helped explain a lot of the stuff, what I, how I learned. And what that slight disability meant is that my auditory memory is almost zilch when it comes to learning. So I have to see stuff, I have to write it down. If someone invites me over to a potluck and they want me to pick stuff up at the store, my friends have figured out if they tell me two items just over the phone, I can show up with two. But if it's more than two, they're like, where's your paper? Where's your pencil, Kelly? And I have to like write it down because it's more than two items. You give me a list of five things to remember, you'll be lucky for me to hear even two. So the fact that I remember this, almost word for word, means this memory is fused with a very, very strong set of emotions. Because the way our God's designed our brain, for some reason, is extremely happy moments or extremely sad moments tend to cement memories very strongly. So, biology teacher, freshman, high school. Students, we're about to start the unit on origins. It's about six weeks long. I really don't care about what you personally believe about this subject. Learn the material, you'll take a test, and I'm happy with that. But all the smart people believe all the smart people believe. Now there's a comma there. And my biology teacher did continue to talk. I didn't hear a word he said. Because the minute he posed the dichotomy, all the smart people believe. Obviously the implication there was. If you have any trouble with the idea of human life evolving by pure random chance, you're not smart. So up until that point, faith, math, science had no collision course. He all of a sudden, by that statement, put all three on a collision course. I like to say my faith was at a point where it wasn't necessarily shaken. But I spent a good two, three, almost to the end, freshman year of college, last year of high school, doing some serious investigation. This is pre-internet days, so we're talking about reading books, attending seminars, talking to other, you know, more educated scientists and mathematicians, dialoguing about settling to the best of my comprehension what I believe is about, you know, is there scientific mathematical evidence for the creator of the universe? Now, I settled that issue for me. I personally revisit it every so many years. I will read another book or attend a seminar or something because there's new developing stuff. So what I'm going to promise you is I'm not going to do to you what that biology teacher did to me. I'm not going to shame you to believe one thing or the other. I'm not going to pull this on you. Well, if you're a good Christian, you must believe, which is kind of the same thing of what my biology teacher did, except kind of a religious version, you understand? So I'm not going to dictate what you believe. I am, in the next about 45 minutes, going to expose you to mathematics and nature. Just math. That's all we're going to talk about because I'm a math teacher. The conclusions you personally draw from today's experience is for your opinion to formulate. But I am going to talk to you about math because this particular issue kind of boils down to one of two things, at least in my mind. Either you're here by chance or you're here by design. That to me is the essential question of origins. You're here by chance or you're here by design. The mechanics of it, you can debate that till the cows come home. But that, to me, is the essential question. So we're gonna talk about it. Go to the first page of today's lesson. First page of today's lesson. Taking a look here. <coughs> See if you can't fill in those blanks. You and a neighbor go the first two lines. Go. First two lines. If you did last night's videos, that should be pretty simplistic. It's in the back, friends. Take a wild guess. Allie, give us the first one, dear. Yeah, put the little congruence sign, and that is the slang definition of congruency. Perfect. 
parched. What a great word. You can go down the hallway and get some water. Come on. Good deal. Who wants to do the next one out loud? Same shape, different size. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Same shape, got it. Yep, different size. And there's your similarity symbol. Put a little star by this. Of course, what we're talking about mostly today is the concept of similarity. Same shape, different size. There's two vocabulary words you're going to hear over and over again. I expect you to memorize these. An iteration is a repeating math pattern. An iteration is a repeating math pattern. It's related to the word reiterate, which means to say again. As teachers are a little bit inf infamous for repeating ourselves. My dad, if I ask him to do something at home, my dad lives with me, and I say, Dad, would you mind whatever, you know, whatever. And then I go to repeat myself. He's like, puts his hand up. He's like, Kelly, don't repeat yourself. I'm not one of your students because I tend to repeat myself several times. So reiterate iteration, a repeating math pattern. Say it with me. Ready? And iteration, a repeating math pattern. Yes. Put a little star by the word math. Draw a little arrow. I want you to keep this in mind every time we talk about math. Math is always by design. You know that instinctually. There was a movie about 20 years ago called Contact, which is not your generation. It's mine. And it's about scientists looking for alien life. And there's one scene in the movie towards the beginning that is shows them monitoring a radio satellite, and it's pointed to the heavens. And what they're basically trying to find is, is sound signals that they believe would be generated by intelligent life. And they get all kinds of signals that are all random and stuff. Then there's this one scene where the signals start coming through in a particular mathematical pattern. And of course, all the scientists get excited. Whoa, you know, something happens, mathematical pattern, because they immediately connect the mathematical pattern of the signals with a reflection of intelligence. We all understand that math is always by design. This is what's going to be so cool today. A fractal is a visual representation of an iteration. It's a pattern that shows self-similarity. So iteration is the math, fractal is the picture. We're gonna do about three of these together. Iteration is the math, fractal is the picture. And what's the third one? Visual representation of an iteration, a pattern that shows self-similarity. Okay, ready? We're gonna just read the orange. Ready and read. Fractal, a visual representation of an iteration. Has a little bit of a jingle to it. We're going to do three of them together. Looking on the right-hand side, ready, start counting, go. These are fractals. Start counting. Your job is to figure out the iteration.
Wait, are we doing all four minutes, man? Mm-hmm. Oh, dang. <laughs> All right, stop, guys. You're going to make me cry. Seriously. Let, no, in a good way. In a good way. Let me tell you what is going to make me cry right now. I like, like almost literally. Okay, so I said jump, and the vast majority of you are like, "How high, Miss Way?" And you're actually by hand <laughs> counting that last one. I mean, just still my heart. You're willing to do whatever it takes. I'm so impressed. Because if you were to do this by hand, it would literally take you about seven. Minutes. All right, let's try. Okay, uh, no, no, let's try. But, but there is a shortcut. So the fact that you're willing to do that by hands, that's just amazing. Raise your hand without counting. You figured out what it was. Raise your hand. Great. Tell a neighbor what's going on there. All righty, guys. Out loud, the red one is how many sides? Three. Yep, yep, yep. This guy on the right, how many Twelve. sides? Twelve. Twelve. Come down here. And this guy, the green is? Forty-eight. Uh-huh. And this last one? One ninety-two. One ninety-two. Now, what you are looking at, label it, is a fractal. So all of these are fractal, in fact. That's a lot of sides. Uh-huh. Whoa. And you were counting them by hand, which I just think is amazing. You were like, Miss Waste did said, do it, let's do it. That's what I meant was going to make me cry. Okay, in a positive way. The pattern is this. Here's your iteration. Your iteration was simply times by four. Oh, really? Wait, how did you get to times by four? Okay, excellent question. Three times four is? There we go. Yeah, there we go. So I'm making you work backwards. I gave you the fractal. And the iteration was times by four. This is called an iteration table. We have to draw one of these. Yeah, we put in three, spits out 12, put in 12, spits out 48, put in 48, spits out 192, and so on and so forth. So we started with the fractal and we worked backwards to the iteration. This is a repeating math pattern. No, 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 don't turn the page yet. I want you to take a look at the fractal. I'm gonna give a question, I want 10 seconds of silence, and then you're gonna to talk to each other. So no talking, 10 seconds. Hold up three fingers, please, three fingers. The question is this. In nature, I'm gonna ask you to name three things this looks like. 10 seconds, respect the 10 seconds. Go talk. Three things in nature. Find someone to talk to. Tanner, find somebody to talk to. In nature. I got like a snowflake. Maybe I like get a spiky ball. Oh yeah. That will work too. Three things. Alrighty, guys. Popcorn style. What are some things you guys have encountered? Mistletoe. Mistletoe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're really in the mood, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, he's the third. He's the third person who's mentioned that because yes, because mistletoe is pointy. Yeah. What else? Oh, snowflake. Snowflake. What else? Reef. Snowflake only has six eyes. Reef. Not always. It just like, oh, it does look like a reef. Every snowflake is different. Okay, this is what people have said in the past. Kind of prickly stuff. What? There is like those like chain things. Yes. Dandelion. Dandelion. Leaf. I'll add mistletoe, Tanner, because you're like the third person to mention it. Here's your snowflake. And so I had to really put the kibosh and you guys being quiet, because if I just let you blur, your brain would have almost instantaneously identified this fractal in nature. And you didn't even probably know what the word fractal meant until today. What you're looking at is math, a visual representation of an iteration. 
and yet you find it in nature. Let's do another one. This is an order of wow factor. Wow. That's only a minor wow. It gets more interesting. That's a minor wow? That's a minor wow. Oh, we have to draw one? Now we get to draw one. Oh. This one, that one was times by four. This one's divide by two. But just to totally mess with your brains, this is the hardest mathematical thing we're doing today. I'm going to start with the whole number. And we're going to take that into a divide by two, which means a fraction, folks. Ready? One, no decimals. One divided by two is? One half. Yes. One half. Now, so that you don't embarrass yourself by not remembering your fourth grade math, let me draw a little picture here. Here's a hole. Here's half of a hole, right? And now if I do half of a half, what do we get? One fourth. Okay, now mathematically, excuse me, that's two, put in two, you get one, let me keep my color straight here, one fourth. Mathematically what happened is one half divided by two is the same as one half times by the reciprocal. So that visually is on the left, mathematically is on the right. So now we come up here, one fourth, five seconds, Div divide by two or times by one half, same thing. Out loud, it's okay, he's one, he's one ahead. Out loud, what is it? Mm -hmm. One eighth, we're gonna go like this, so cool. Okay, out loud, what do we get? Amazing, okay. This is an iteration. It's a repeating math pattern. It's just math. Math is always by design. Now we're going to interpret it into a fractal. There's literally hundreds of ways we could interpret it. I'm a math teacher, so I'm going to keep it simple, and I'm going to make it segments. So ready? This is going to represent one, one segment. Okay, as we do this, Keep it quiet. Now I'm going to take that one segment and I'm going to make one half. I'm going to divide by two. Just follow along. Keep in mind, I'm just taking the math and making a fractal, a visual representation of an iteration. Here's one fourth. Take my half, split it by fourths. One fourth, one eighth, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Keep in mind, what you're looking at is a fractal. It's a visual representation of an iteration. What's an iteration? It's just math. I am not going to make you do 1 16th on every single portion. Just do one portion. Let's see. Where do I? I'm going to go over here. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Keep in mind, just do one section. 16. So eight minutes aside. All righty, guys. Question, and then 10 seconds of silence. Hold up three fingers again. Three fingers. Question is this. In nature, think of three things this might look like. 10 seconds. 10 seconds. Go, now talk, go, talk to each other. Name three things, three things this might look like. Looks like a book, the leaves. I mean, like, it's all like the same book. Like, book, like, book, like, book, like, book, book, yeah? Or, or maybe the antennas of a moth kind of a thing going on there. Those of you who've been close up with the moth, yeah, like that. Okay, give me, give me some folks. What do you got? Just raise your hand. Tree of some sort? Yeah, what else? 
Christmas. Leaves of a Christmas tree. Oh, what yeah, else? Pine, what is it, pine, pine needles. Pine yep. Needles. Anything else? Antlers. Antlers, potentially, yes. Here's some things students have said in the past. Leaf veins, lightning. Uh, oh! Lightning. Ah, good creative. There's your pine needles. Yeah. Frost. Ferns. Feathers. If you look closely at a feather, a feather has fractal nature. Branching, branching, branching. So once again, that is just an iteration. Point to the screen and say, it's just math. It's just math. It's math. Keep in mind, math is always by design. Get out your calculators. Oh, I don't have mine today. Yes, you can get out your phones, folks. Oh, Truly. Oh, my today. <laughs> okay, now put your phones face down, because you're not going to use them for this first little part. I'll be scared if you grab your phones for this part. <laughs> You'll see why in a second. All right, the pattern this time is simply sum to previous. So one sum to previous plus one is? Two. There we go. And the next one, two plus one is? Three. Yeah, so you can see why you're not touching a calculator. Go, find the rest of those. Don't say it out loud. Oh, wait. I got that wrong. Okay, it's sum to previous. So you're just adding the... Uh, it's sum to the previous number. Yes, yes, it's a regular day. All right, friends, here we go. Yep, there we go. Now you may get out your calculators. This is what I'd like you to do, please. You're going to take these two numbers, and you're going to divide the larger by the smaller, so 21 divided by 13, and you're going to take that to the... Second decimal, and write it down. Don't say it out loud. You take the larger number and divide by the smaller number. Oh. Take it, so the 21 divided by 13. Then you're going to write it down, second decimal. Then you're going to take 13 and 8 and divide, round it to the second decimal place. Larger by smaller, again, second decimal place. So 21 divided by 13, divide, 13 divided by 8, divide, and then 8 divided by 5. You don't need to go any farther. You'll see the pattern from there. So you're going to get three separate numbers. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're taking 21 and dividing by 13, that's one number. Then you're doing 13 divided by 8, that's a second number. No, it's the larger by the smaller. So 13 divided by 8, and then 8 divided by 5. It should be very close. Okay. I want it to the second decimal. All righty. Shane, what'd you get for the yellow one? The first one? 1.62. Fabulous. Beth, what'd you get for the next one? The middle one? 13 divided by 8, dear. 1.63. It rounds to 6.3. Okay. All righty. And then over here, Nate, what'd you get for 8 divided by 5? Yes, sir. 1.60. So you can see that all of them, if you went add infinity this way, it's going to be very close or approximately to 1.6. This actually has a name. It's called the golden ratio. It is found almost ubiquitously in nature. Remember, a ratio is just a comparison by division. We don't have time to do this, but just for giggles, you could do this at home if you want. Go like this with your hand, top of your head, chin. You find that distance. Then go ear to ear. And that distance, divide. Guess what it's going to be really close to? 1.6. 1.6. Like I said, you could do it at home. If you want, ready? Put your hand up. Okay, touch middle finger down to your wrist. And then from your thumb knuckle across the widest part of your hand. 
Divide those two numbers, guess what will come out really close to? 1.6. Same thing with your feet. Longest part of your foot, widest part of your foot near the balls of your feet. That's going to be very close to 1.6. Go like this. Collarbone to waistline. That length. And then divide by hip to hip. Guess what that's going to be very close to? 1.6. 1.6. Your entire body, there's about six different proportions of your human body which comes out to very close itself to the golden ratio. Just FYI. We're going to do one more here. And we're going to take these numbers and we're going to turn them into a fractal. So, and they're going to be rectangles because I'm a geometry teacher. I like rectangles. So our first numbers is one and one. So take a look right here. This is a one by one. Technically, that's a rectangle, which in this case is a square. Because all squares are rectangles. Now our next two number is 1 by 2. So watch, trace up the 1. And then go to the right 2. Stay right with me. It's easy to get lost. So close it up into a 1 by 2 rectangle. 1 by 2, because that's your next number. Your next number is going to be 2 by what? 2 by 2. Nope, nope. What's the next number? 2 by 3 is your next number. So you start there, where the blue is. There's your two. Now you're going to go down three. One, three. Close it up. Sketch it out. There's your two by three. Okay, Kate, okay, let me, let, two, starting right there at the edge of the two. See where the X is? Go this way, two, and then down three. So it's a two by three rectangle. Next one's three by what? Mm-hmm. So watch, you start, I'm going to change colors. So where the green is, there's three. And now we're going to go to left five. Close it up into a rectangle. Next one is five by what? No, no, next one. Five by eight. So starting where that yellow dot is. There's your five, and now you bunny hop eight up. We are, if you haven't figured it out, we're going clockwise, friends. All right, next one's going to be eight by what? Mm -hmm. So there's your eight, right there to the right, 13. Smooth it out. Last one, 13 by what, friends? 21. Yes, you were counting that. Start bunny hopping. Right there. Got it. All right, so keep in mind what you were looking at is a fractal. A fractal is a visual representation of an iteration. It's just math. Now we're gonna do one more thing on top of that. I need to put a total kibosh because you're gonna start like blowing up the brain here in just a moment. You artsy people will have a little bit easier time of this. Okay, it's just math, so I'm going to come really close. Back to the one by one. You are looking at the opposite corners. I'd like you to connect that with a curvy thingy. Opposite corners, curvy thingy. Okay, then you're going to go opposite corners again. You're heading for the other opposite corner and curvy thingy. Okay. There's your opposite corner with the X. Again, your next opposite corner curvy thingy. Let's smooth it out a bit. Okay. We are going for this opposite corner here. Curvy. Come on, brother. Come on, brother. 
And we're going to that X right there. Curvy thingy. Coming around to this X here. Curvy thingy, curvy thingy. Okay, go back and smooth it out a bit. I'll kind of highlight it. Mm, you send me the link. That sounds like fun. Send me a link. Okay, hold on three fingers. Quick question, 10 seconds of silence, okay? You've done a really good job of this, folks. So 10 seconds, question is this. In nature, so you artsy, not you musical people, it's not a bass clef, please, okay? In nature, what does this remind you of? 10 seconds. Go, talk. What does it remind you of? A wave, a tornado, you should easily find three things. Easily. Nature tells us. What are your thoughts? Snail. What are your thoughts? Snail. What are your thoughts? Snail. 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 Trace the ear line. Oh. <laughs> your ear line. That's another thing your body could measure your uh, height width. This is called a um, Fibonacci spiral. This is called the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. They're all interrelated. This Fibonacci spiral has shocking frequency in several natural things most of you already named them yes the conch shell the horn of rams curves at the fibonacci waves you're correct the swirl of that wave follows the golden ratio someone said over here tornadoes hurricanes the spiral plants pineapples follow the fibonacci spiral pine cones follow the fibonacci spiral yes yeah, if you look at it downward. Yes, even the arms of our Milky Way galaxy. Let me reiterate, what you're looking at is a fractal, which is a visual representation of an iteration. It's just math. It's just math. And all math is by design. All right. Debrief with a neighbor. What is it that you find most interesting so far? Go. Debrief with a neighbor. What is it you find most interesting? Go. Yeah, that spiral thing. What's the name of like? It's like where you have a triangle or a shape, and you put an upside shape in it, and you keep doing that. Like yeah, that's a fractal. I know. Is that it, is a fractal. That's a special, that's a Lewinsky, a Lewinsky triangle. Yes. All right, guys, turn the page. And these three bullets, try to fill them out from memory. Right. Fill them out from memory. Those three bullets, go. Fill them out from memory. Turn the page. Fill them out from memory. <laughs> 